Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Gagandeep Singh. I'm a solution architect at AWS. And today we have an exciting conversation lined up with Mr. Tarun Dev, Director, Cloud and Data Platform at Snapdeal. And recently Snapdeal migrated uh, its entire data center, on-prem data center to AWS Cloud in just 45 days. Right. And we are here to learn more about their journey towards cloud, the challenges faced and the benefit realized. Thank you for joining us today, Tarun. Welcome here. And to start, could you please tell us a little more about Snapdeal and its business? Yeah. Hey, Gagan. Thanks for having me here. So uh, Snapdeal is a leading retail and e-commerce business focusing on tier two and tier three cities across India. We operate multiple well-known brands like Snapdeal, Unicommerce, Rangita, etc. And we have both online and offline presence. Oh, great. Glad to know about so many brands from Snapdeal. Okay. And what were the key primary drivers, Tarun, uh, behind your decisions to move to AWS Cloud from on-prem? So we were operating out of our private data center license, uh, I think 2015. So due to a need for hardware refresh and limited scalability options with our on-premise setup, we decided to explore cloud options. We evaluated multiple cloud vendors, but I would say the AWS stood out for its strong customer support, fast area of services, stability, and it was ideal choice for our migration. Glad to know, same. Okay, so before moving to AWS, can you just uh, let us know about your on-prem infrastructure, what it was, what were what kind of workloads you were running over there? Yeah, yeah, it was a big setup. We had around uh, 1,200 physical servers, each server having, uh, I think, 72 cores. We had like petabyte of uh, storage. We were using Ceph uh, or our uh, uh, basically block storage. And we have around 250 microservices built on Java and Spring Boot, backed by technologies like MySQL, Kafka, Cassandra, like you name the technology and we are using it. For our data needs, we were using Vertica and we have our own internal data platform, which is, which is backed by Spark. Oh, amazing. So seems like you're using all the latest tech and trends, huh? <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. so... Can you walk us through the migration planning process, how you identified, because it, it's a very big infrastructure, 1700 physical machine, and I believe it was around 2500 plus uh, virtual machines. So how you thought of identifying, how you identified that uh, workload, which one to migrate first, how you prioritize and uh, continue with the migration? Can you shed some light on this? So the planning process was, uh intensive uh, yet it was very efficient so we le we leveraged aws services uh, like dms for uh, database migration then we used direct connect which gave us a very low latency uh, network on high bandwidth uh, basically which enabled us to kind of run in a hybrid mode for uh, around month month and a half so we started by migrating less critical workloads. And once we were confident that everything was working fine, we basically gained up speed and then moved our core services uh, on, uh, on the deploys. But as far as I know, starting from planning to the entire migration, that entire stuff you were able to complete in just 45 days. And that's definitely an impressive achievement. So how you ensure business continuity, minimizing your downtime during this migration? How was that possible? It was a lot of 45 days. It was 45 days and 45 nights, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I would credit a great planning process. So I remember, I think uh, around 50 to 60% of the time was put up in planning. And... Uh, once we had a clear plan, execution, I would say, was pretty simple. So we engaged AWS support, uh, AWS pros of early on, and which was part of our, for example, landing zone creation. For our initial planning, uh, we were very thorough. We made sure we were doing the thing manually. 
we used Terraform uh, to provision everything using code. That's really amazing to hear about, right? Because having everything planned and then executed seamlessly, that is definitely an awesome. Okay, and uh, completing this migration, because normally I have seen, right, a lot of companies, they migrate to doing lift and shift. I don't know about the approach that you guys have used, so I want to hear the same. So doing lift and shift and after that, the companies usually take benefit of cloud modernization, enhancements, the cost optimization, a lot of stuff. So was there any benefit after you move to cloud or improvements that you observed in your operations on AWS? Yeah, uh, like you rightly mentioned, uh, this was the exact approach we took after multiple discussions with the AWS team. And uh, we observed, like, because migration uh, on its own is a very large, uh, large activity, right? So you don't want to, like, make, add more variables to that activity by, uh, uh, like, changing anything or modernizing the first phase. So we decided that first we will just lift everything as it is and we'll run it on AWS. And then once everything is running fine, then we'll start our modernization journey. And I'm happy to tell you that we were able to reduce our cloud spends by a massive 65% through modernization efforts, including like, for example, using Graviton, which gave us a lot better price performance and then saving plans. Uh, we were able to use spot instances, some serverless services we were able to use. So AWS offers like a lot of services, which if used wisely can result in great performance and uh, cloud, uh, cloud cost optimization. Amazing to hear 65% cost optimization. Awesome, kudos to hear same. Okay. And what are the key learnings uh, from the migration journey? Because when you say you migrated uh, so many applications, definitely there would have been a couple of challenges in that. So want to hear about those challenges so that uh, the audience who are hearing us, they should also get to know about the challenges and how we can overcome say. Like I already mentioned, uh, I think biggest learning was the importance of uh, thorough planning and uh, uh, making sure you have like our, your fundamentals sorted. So we faced a few issues, uh, mostly related to capacity planning. Like for example, we required uh, some number of instances of a particular type and they were not available. But uh, with AWS support, we were quickly able to uh, get through those kind of issues. And then we basically fine-tuned our approach on the, on the uh, like dynamically on the run. And we were able to get through. Great. Okay, cool. So what advice would you give to other organizations, right, who are yet on-prem and planning to move to cloud, but somehow they are currently not getting confidence enough. So what confidence, what advice you want to give it to them before so that uh, they consider migrating their workflow to AWS? So I would say, uh, like, uh, yeah, migration is a big activity, but uh, with proper planning, it is possible and more often it is beneficial to move to cloud because it gives you a flexibility where you can basically uh, optimize on multiple aspects uh, related to infrastructure. Involve AWS support teams as early as possible because uh, they help you with setting up uh, the main platform on which then you can scale and uh, uh, build uh, on top of them. They also help you basically uh, make sure that you are using all, uh, you are incorporating security in your design. And that I would say is very important in today's day and time. That security, you don't, uh, like it should not come after a migration. It should be part of your design. So I would say uh, engage AWS services, AWS support team as early in the planning process. And then once you have, you can see your end-to-end -end plan and just focus on executing and migration will go smoothly. 
Sure. So being myself a security specialist, I'll definitely vouch for security planning on day zero. So before or even you start, so definitely in your planning, your planning should start with security in center. So that has to be right. there. That's advice from my side too for all our customers. And uh, it is really incredible to hear about your successful migration journey and the benefit of 65% cost optimization that you have achieved in such a short time. Uh, uh, before we wrap up, right, is there anything else that you want to share your experience or any planning, future planning or any of this? Yeah, it's been a great experience. Uh, we are excited about the future possibilities in AWS, especially with Gen AI, machine learning coming up. We are already exploring a lot of advanced use cases with SageMaker, Bedrock, and we're expanding on our use of serverless technologies to further streamline our operations. AWS has been truly a game changer for us, uh, and we look forward to continuing this, uh, this partnership. Great, great. Glad to be a partner of Sanambi uh, right in this successful journey. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Tarun, for sharing uh, your insight and experience with us today. And we wish you continued success with your cloud initiative. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Tarun. Thank you.